Good morning, church. All right. I wish everybody doing today. Have you ever looked yourself in the mirror lately? And intentionally, and uh, talk to yourself. What did you say? You know, I do it most of the time. Yeah, I look myself in the mirror, and the first thing I say to myself, "Hey there, handsome." <laughs> yep. Come on now, don't be shy. Who among you here has done that and is still doing it until today? I'm still doing it. Yeah. I'm still doing it. You know why? Because God said, just made everything beautiful in this time. Right? So if you're handsome, raise your hand. If you're beautiful, raise your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. And in Song of Solomon, you are beautiful, my darling. Beautiful beyond words. Amen. You know, number two, the second thing that I say to myself, you know, handsome, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. At number three, I say to myself, you are so blessed by God every day. Don't never forget that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Do you know why I talk to myself? You know why? Because it reinforces positivity. It boosts my self-esteem. It boosts my self-confidence. You know, believing and trusting in my abilities because God and trusted them to me, all right? Amen. Okay, now, can I have uh, two couples, volunteer two couples to come here in front? Two couples? Oh, I see a volunteer right there. Volunteer, Sister Jeannie and Brother Rex. Come on, one of our elder, Brother Rex. <laughs> Volunteered by Alex. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Alex, for helping me out. Okay, one more, one more, one more couple. Oh. You guys, Brother Pete and Sister Faith. Okay. Brother Pete is looking at me. He's telling me, pick me, pick me. Okay, now. Now. All right. Oh, we have a problem. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on, Sister Faith. No. Okay, let's start off with... Uh, Brother Rex and Sister Jenny, can you stand up and face the, uh, the congregation, please? Now, this is going to be good. Now, um, Brother Rex, can you tell Sister Jenny, hey, beautiful, like you mean it. <laughs> now, Sister Jenny, your turn to tell your husband, hey, husband. <laughs> now, here's my question. Mr. Ginny, how does it feel? Good, Brother Rex? Good, right, good? Thank you very much, thank you very much. Now, Sister Faye, Brother Pete, come on. That's enough? Okay, okay, okay. You see, you know, how does it make you feel when your husband or the wife, hey there, beautiful. <laughs> right? And the wife will tell the husband, hey there, handsome. How would that make you feel? To be honest, good, right? Right. Amen. You know, there were there were times when me and my wife are having this. So sweet moment back home, you know, in front of the kids. And, and I will call her, hey, beautiful. And she will be laughing. And she'll be giggling. And I know she like it. And she will be calling me, hello, handsome. And of course, I like it. You know, and, you know, my, my daughter, Mikaela, she'll be like, ooh, yeah. You know, and she will be running out of the room. Ah! going outside of the room. And then 
a few moments later, she'll be opening up the door and she will peek, take a peek and she will say to us, you're too old for that. <laughs> but of course, you know, just, you know, making, making fun of us. But, you know, those things are fun, right? Those things are fun. It's nice to have fun, it's nice to have joke around with your, with your kids and laugh, right? But, you know, somehow, because of the business of this world, so much work to do, so many things in mind, even the traffic, you know, gets into our mind, we forgot to laugh. And we forgot to have a really good time with our families. I remember someone told me, you know, uh, Mike, I'm not worried about the second coming. I'm more worried about Judith. I was Judith. Yeah, I'm worried about Judith. I was like, who's Judith? Who's Judith? You don't know who Judith is? No, I don't know who's Judith. Why are you afraid of Judith? And why not the second coming? Why not the coming of Christ? You know, I'm afraid of Judith because, you know, every month Judith is coming. <laughs> you know, electricity Judith. Yeah, Judith. <laughs> <laughs> right? The electricity, Judith. The water, Judith. It's Judith every month. Oh, Judith. Yeah, it's Judith. Yeah. When we're, we're laughing, you know, sometimes we forget to laugh. You know, sometimes we forget to laugh because we're so busy with our life, you know. And sometimes uh, when we are old and, you know, cannot work anymore, we look back into our lives and realize that all we did was work to make a living that we forgot to make a life. Now, it says there, work to live, don't live to work. Build your work around your life, not your life around your work. Make sense? Now, why am I saying all of this to you? Because we are forgetting that we have a life to live. You have a life to live. I remember someone said, I was so busy doing my job that I forgot to do my job. You know, we're too busy with our careers. We are too busy doing our jobs because of Judith <laughs> that we forgot to have time with our family. We forgot to do our job to enjoy them, to have fun with our family, have meals together, pray together, savor the moments that we all have, our families with us. And of course, you know, someone might say, oh, brother Mike, each member of the family is so busy with school, with work, you know, everything, we don't have time. But really, you don't have time? No. I want you to remember this. You will never find time for anything. It is just a matter of how much you want it. Only then you will know that you will have time for it. We already know that money, fame, you know, wealth, it is not the answer for real happiness. When all you do in life is stress yourself with so many things, you know, work, school, traffic, politics, etc., and not truly really live a happy life. No, when you look back again into your life, I want you to remember this. No one in his deathbed ever said, I wish I had spent more time at the office. No one. No one. Now, what do people normally say? This is not it. What do we normally say? We ask a hundred people survey when they wish they spend their time with. And survey says, I wish I had spent more time with family, not the office. I wish I had spent more time with God. And I wish I had more time with myself. And that is true. When we look back into our life, we don't say, I wish I had more time spent in the office. No. 
We always say, I wish I had more time with my loved ones, with my family, with God and myself. Now, with all of these things preoccupying our mind, you know, even the smallest things, which are not so important, we make a big deal out of it. It makes our life less happy. And we are putting much stress on our shoulders, leading us to anxiety, leading us to depression. Today, we will be talking about our friendly neighborhood stress. Right? We are so broken. You know, for the past few months, we've been talking about brokenness. Right? And today, we're talking about stress. You know, we will see some principles in the Bible on how to manage stress and enjoy our life more with God. Now, According to World Health Organization, stress can be defined as a state of worry or mental tension caused by a difficult situation. Psychology today, stress generally refers to two things, the psychological perception of pressure on one hand and the body's response to it on the other, which involves multiple systems from metabolism to muscles to memory. So stress is a mental state that worries a person that takes a toll on our body eventually. And that is what stress is. Now the question is, is stress normal? Again, according to World Health Organization, stress is a natural human response that prompts us to address challenges and threats in our lives. Everyone experiences stress to some degree, and that is true. But the way we respond to stress, however, makes a big difference to our overall well-being. It is your response to stress that makes the big difference. You know, stress are even necessary as it means uh, a way to respond to dangers. Okay? What we know as the fight and flight response. The fight and flight response. I remember this one guy. You know, he, he was trying to bully a small dog. You know, he was trying to bully the dog. <clears throat> trying to do that. And, you know, and the dog responded with a flight response. The dog went out, ran. But this guy, he kept on following the dog, pursuing the dog. Until the dog was, you know, uh, he was cornered. And nowhere to go, the dog let his eyes on that guy. And then it started to growl. And then the dog immediately ran towards the guy in fight response. And the guy immediately backs up and jumped over the fence. He was on the flight response. That's how, you know, that's how we do it. Either you go in the fight mode or you go in the flight mode. That's how we respond. When we, when we, there, there's fear, fight or flight mode. When we are stressed, the same thing, you know. But according to psychology today, this response of ours, the stress, our response to those things, these are not meant, or these are meant, rather, these are meant to solve short-term, short-term life-threatening problems. Now, short term, it is not meant to solve extended difficulties, such as your daily problems with the traffic jams. Your stress will not solve the traffic jam. Your stress will not solve our poor air quality. No. But if you keep on stressing yourself every day with those things, then you will have what they call a chronic stress. Now, Though stress is normal, there is a risk factor involved in stress if, if, if it becomes part of your lifestyle. If you are becoming or being stressed every day, then you will have a problem with your health. Okay? Do not stress yourself with things that you don't have any control over. You know, from time to time, we must reinforce ourselves with positivity. You must calm yourself down. You know, challenges in life, they will never go away. They will never go away. There will be challenges every day. So you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. In Matthew 6, 27, here's a question. Can any one of you, by worrying, add 
the single R in your life? What's the answer? No. No. So Jesus Christ said, why worry? Right? You know, because of too much worries in life, we are not enjoying life. We are not appreciating God's blessings every day. Then the Bible in the book of Ecclesiastes, it tells us that you know, there is time for everything. There is time to mourn. There is time to, uh, to worry. There is time for us to, to fear. And there is also time for us to be happy. There is time for us to enjoy one another, to enjoy life, to enjoy God's blessing. Now, what Jesus is saying is that he does not want us to dwell you know, our life with problems, but rather to truly learn to trust him in all with provisions in our lives, right? Now, if we focus on what worries us, chances are we will not see how blessed you are. Can you say to yourself, I'm so blessed to be stressed? Can you say that to yourself? I always say that to myself. I'm so blessed to be stressed. You know, I'm so handsome to be stressed. Come on. <laughs> you know, but if we will look again now, um, you will be missing. If you always look at the problems, you will be missing the life, the good life that Jesus Christ wants you to have. Now, can anybody tell me what Matthew 6.33 is? Matthew 6.33. Yeah. Amen. Right. Sometimes we sing that we're seek me first. Right. And we, we, we memorize this verse. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Right? Now here's a question and just answer it to yourself. Right? Do you believe this? Number one, do you believe this? Do you truly believe what Jesus said? Matthew 6, 33. And number two, if you believe it, do you live by it? Those are two totally different things. Believing is one thing, but living by it is another thing. You know, if your answer is yes, you believe it and you live by it, praise God, amen. But if you don't, then you don't. But here's the thing. Many Christians, they memorize this. They memorize this. But unfortunately, many Christians don't live these words. Do you believe Matthew 6, 30? Oh, of course, brother Mike. Do you live by it? Of course not. See, many Christians, they memorize this by heart, but they don't live it. They don't live what Jesus Christ said. And they don't even live Matthew 6, 27. Now, according to, to Harvard Health Publishing in Harvard Medical School, you know, positivity, Positive psychology is not about denying emotions. It is not about denying stress and challenges in life. It is about opening to what is happening here and now and cultivating and savoring the good in your life. We must develop the habit of focusing and even counting our blessings. You must cultivate that habit of counting your blessings every day. We have a song, Count Your Many Blessings. Count your blessings and see what God has done to you, right? Instead of counting your worries. If we do that, it can lead us to a better appreciation of life. Now question, what will help solve your stress and worry? Your faith. Second question, who will help you solve your stress and worry? Jesus Christ. In our scripture reading, Mark 6, 33, then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. 
You know, I love this verse because it talks so many things. It is deep in meaning. You know, this verse will help us uh, to navigate uh, to a manageable, stressful life. If you are overburdened by stress and worries in life, now I want you to listen to this. Question. What do we normally uh, tell our family members and friends when they are overworked? What do you normally tell them? If they're overstressed, if they're overworked. What? But we, we, we normally tell them, you know, take a break. Relax. Enjoy a movie. Right? Go for a massage. Right? Go for a vacation. Take a time off. Right? Now, when you come back from vacation, of course, you are rejuvenated. You are refreshed. You look more handsome than ever. You look more beautiful than ever. Right? Now, you have a renewed energy. But here's the thing. My dear brothers and sisters, here's the thing. When you go back to work, when you go back to your office, now, what will welcome you on your desk? Still the work. And a lot of work. Why? Because of the work that you left, when you come back, it's still there. It doesn't go away. Right? Did it go away? No. The problem is still there and you have more work. Why? Because of the time that you left for a vacation, then added work comes in. When you left, the paper is like here. When you come back, like this. So you have more work to do. And then when you come to the office, oh, man, you're stressed out again. So the energy, the renewed energy you got from your vacation is meant to do more work and more problems, <laughs> right? And now here's another thing. You have another problem. What's the problem, Brother Mike? Now, because you went for a vacation, you swipe it on your card, and then now comes Judith. <laughs> now, you have more problems than before, right? And now you're blaming Brother Mike. I should have not listened to Brother Mike. I should have not taken that vacation, right? You have more problems now. You see, does it solve your problem? No, it does not solve the problem. So again, you end up stressed out. You end up with many more problems at hand. Now, look at what Jesus said. Now, it becomes a cycle, right? It becomes a cycle. Now, listen to what Jesus said. The red um, words Jesus said, Come with me. Right? When you are stressed out in life, overburdened, worried in life, so many problems, Jesus said, come with me. You know, because of many people, they are coming and going. The apostles did not have even a chance to eat. They were stressed out. They were burdened. They have no time to eat. Now, listen. Jesus did not tell his disciples, you know what? You're so tired. Go take a vacation. Go, you know, you take my boat. Take that silver boat. That's my boat. And go for a, a ride on the Sea of Galilee, in the Jordan River. You know, take, take a vacation. Take a, a fishing trip. Then come back. No. Jesus did not say that to them. What Jesus said, come with me. Come with me. Now, when you are so burned out in life, when you are stressed out and worried about so much in life, you forget what Jesus said in Matthew 67. That even how much you are so you, you worried in life, you cannot add a single R to your life, right? And when you are so stressed out and you don't see God's blessing, you're missing the word, 
the world and you're missing the life. Jesus said, come with me. I want you to take this journey with me. Right? And what is Jesus saying here is Jesus wants you to relationship. When Jesus asks you to come with me, Ryan, come with me. Jesus is asking you to come take a relationship. Take this relationship with me. And listen, you're getting the point. Now, you are stressing your life, right? And, you know, a breakfast at Tiffany's won't solve your problem. A, a dinner at Sublimotion, the, 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 the uh, uh, expensive restaurant in the world in Spain, won't, won't uh, uh, solve your problem. You know, when I looked that up, I was shocked to find out that a, a, a dinner per head at Sublimotion restaurant in Spain, it costs yeah, very charge, it only costs 2400 2400 small, right? <laughs> $2,400 per head. Wow. Right? You know, that won't solve your problem. Or a Caribbean tour. No, it will not solve your problem. Your problems and worries in life will not go away with those kind of things. We are stressed out. We are worried because we don't have, you know, the right perspective. And the only way that you can have the right perspective in life is you must have the right relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And having a right relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important relationship you will ever have. It is with Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ said, come with me. Take this journey with me. Now, let's see Matthew 6.33 again and look, look at it from a different perspective. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, the word seek, it means go and find. Go and find God. And when you go to God, you are coming to God. And you get the point. You are coming to God. And you are seeking God for what? For a relationship. And this is what Matthew 6.33 is all about. It is all about relationship with Jesus Christ. Because when you seek Jesus Christ, when you seek God, you are coming to him for a relationship. And when you have that right relationship with God, then look what he's telling you. And all these things shall be added to you. Now, these things, what are those things? Those things that you need in life. Those things that worries you so much. Jesus said, come with me. Take this relationship with me. Take my hand. Let, take, let's take this journey together. And I will give all of those things that you worry so much. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Brian. Amen. Now, you know, why do we stress yourself over these things and burn yourself out of working? Well, Jesus said, I will give all of those things to you. Now, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, <clears throat> Jesus said, come to me. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Now, there it is again. Jesus said, come to me. He did not say, go. Go will come later. But Jesus said, now you come to me. All right? Now, if you are worried, if you are burdened, Jesus said, come to me. What is Jesus talking about here? He is talking about, again, relationship. Relationship. And he promised that he will give you rest. You know, I, I know, I know, I know, you know, uh, you, we all need to take a rest, right? I know that. We all need to have that vacation. I know that. We all need that from time to time. But Jesus is talking about a different kind of rest. Not the kind of rest that we are thinking about, but a rest for your souls. A rest for your souls. That's different from what we, we want. Jesus eventually 
wants us, ultimately wants you to have the rest for your soul. Matthew chapter 11, particularly this verse is telling us that what we are doing, we are doing something wrong. We are doing something wrong with our life. That's why we are stressed out. That's why we are so totally burned out. There's something that we are doing wrong. And we are losing the battle. And Jesus is asking us now, you know, come with me. Take this journey with me. Because his way is the winning way. Our path, our way lead us to overburden. Our way leads us to overstress. But Jesus' way will lead us to ultimate rest. Amen. That's why Jesus said, come with me. Take this relationship with me. Let's take it to a higher level. Right? In Jesus Christ, you will have peace that you cannot imagine and even cannot explain. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Wow. Amazing, isn't it? Now, you know what? <clears throat> when, when someone asks me, about my, how do you manage you know, uh, to look life so positively? And how... Do you look so at peace in life? My simple answer is Jesus Christ. To be honest, Jesus Christ. You know, they asked me, can you, can you explain that further? Now, here's what I told them. You know, this peace that I have, you know, I cannot really explain. It. And when I cannot explain it, I love it. I love it. You know why? Because... I, I told them, I love it because I want you to dive in with Jesus Christ so that yourself can experience it. You know, it's, like, it's like eating food. When you taste the food, wow, mm, delicious, tastes good. And then someone asks you, how does it taste? Tastes good. Can you explain it to me? No. You have to taste it for yourself, right? You have to dig in or grab a bite so that you can taste it how good the food is, right? I cannot eat it for you and say, Ooh, good, you have to taste it. Same thing, you have to dive with Jesus Christ for you to, to understand what I am feeling. Look, God's peace which exists anything we can understand. And his peace will guard you in hearts and minds. You know, something that's you know, really hard to explain, but it is because of Jesus Christ doing it for you. So I told them, jump in with Jesus Christ. Come with Jesus Christ. Experience the joy that I am enjoying with Jesus Christ. You know, real rest comes from real relationship with Jesus Christ. True peace comes from a true relationship with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> then, second, after Jesus Christ told them, come with me, Jesus Christ said, by yourselves. Come with me by yourself. Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, lest us strip off, throw off every weight that shows and wears, uh, that slows and wears us down, especially the sin <clears throat> that so easily trips us up and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Now going back, Jesus said, come with me by yourself. When you come to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ wants you to take the load off, to take all the worries with you, to take all that stress from your shoulder, to take off that sin, that unbelief, that mistrust, the untrusting heart, Jesus wants you to take that off. You strip it off. You throw it away and come clean with Jesus Christ. You know, when we come to Jesus Christ, Jesus said, come with me by yourself. Take off those things. Take off those extra baggage that you have in your life. Throw it all away. Throw that sin away. Come with me. Now listen, 
Now, and then Hebrews 12, 2, Jesus said, fix your eyes on me. When you come to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ don't want you to look looking back, just like what happened to the wife of Lot. You know, Jesus Christ doesn't want you to look back and grab hold of that sin, look back and grab hold or take hold of that stress that worries you. No, Jesus Christ said, no, you don't. When you come with me, hey, fix your eyes on me. Hey, look, look here. See, when Brother Rex and Sister Jeannie would go out, you know, Brother Rex don't go looking like that. Sister Jeannie will tell you, hey, Rex, look here, fix your eyes on me. <laughs> right? Jesus said, <clears throat> when you come with me, come with me by yourself, fix your eyes on me. Take, take everything out. You know, unload it. Don't take it with you. Come with me. Love yourself the way I love you. When you come to Jesus Christ, as we, as we fix <clears throat> our relationship with him, you have to fix your relationship with yourself. You have to love yourself the way Jesus loves you. You have to love yourself enough to see, you know, that worries in life and the sin of not trusting Jesus will ruin your life and won't fix anything. If you truly love yourself, you will come to Jesus by yourself without those extra baggages. And you will focus your life on him. And then finally, Jesus said, come with me by yourself to a quiet place. Now, can you concentrate when it is noisy? Can you focus when it is noisy, when it, it is too, too messy? No. Can you sleep when it is noisy outside? No. It's hard to sleep. Can you really have peace of mind <clears throat> when everything around you is totally chaotic, messy, and loud? No, it's hard, right? It's hard. Now, Jesus is contrasting here what this world will give you and what he can give you, right? Now, this world will give you what? Will give you so much worries. This world will stress you out will burden you out. But Jesus Christ, with Jesus, no, it's totally different. I will give you peace and I will give you rest, all right? Now, Jesus said, the Bible said, do not conform to this world, to the pattern of this world, because <clears throat> this world is full of sin. This world is messy. This world is in utter disorder. <clears throat> but Jesus, he will lead you to a quiet place. He will lead you to a quiet place, to a place of your ultimate rest. Because Jesus said, in me, you have peace. In me, you will have peace. But Jesus said, take heart. Why? Take heart. Why? Because while you are still living in this world, Jesus will take care of you. <clears throat> he has your back. He has your back. When you have that real relationship with him, you don't have to worry. As Jesus will guide your heart and will guide your mind and give you rest and peace because he has overcome the world you know i'm a living a living proof of this and i know that many of us here are a living proof of this word of our lord jesus christ right you know we've been there rock bottom we stress ourselves so much that we almost gave up but because of Jesus Christ, we are all now standing tall. Because of our faith with Jesus Christ, you know. You know, he, he, he provided me with everything. Every time when I come to God, pray to God, you know, God never ceases to amaze me. He provides everything. And there's a purpose for everything. And again, for sure, you are also a living proof, you know. There's a one story, a quick, uh, quick story about a friend of mine uh, back home. He, he was praying to God. Uh, he was also in the ministry. He was praying to God that uh, he wanted to have a, a vehicle so that he can use it for ministry because it's hot 
and is going far uh, distant places. So he prayed to God and he was um, <clears throat> saving enough money so he could buy uh, his own vehicle. Then one morning, one morning around five in the morning, someone knocked at the door and uh, they were awakened and the wife uh, peeked at the door and he saw one of the members from the church. And uh, the wife said, oh, hello, Brother John. Oh, what's up? Well, why are you here so, so early this morning? Um, can we help you? And then John told the wife, oh, can I, can I talk to Brother uh, Rick? Okay, I'll, I'll wake him up. And then he, he woke the, the husband. Hey, Rick, Brother John is here. He wants to talk to you. What, what, what time is it? It's five in the morning. I don't know what's the problem. So Rick got up and he went to John and make some coffee. Oh, uh, Brother John, what can I do for you? And then John told the brother, you know, Brother Rick, um, for many days, I'm being, somehow being compelled to come to you and to bless you. Um, okay, I'm listening. Um, somehow, you know, my heart tells me to come here this morning and buy you a new car. And Rick said, you know what? You're late. <laughs> I'm waiting for you at 3 a.m. It's 5 a.m. <laughs> you know, and Brother Rick was surprised. He was surprised. Really? Yeah. That's why I'm early because, I want, because it's two hours drive and then uh, we have to go around. So I want to be, we want to be early. You know, God is amazing, right? You know, God is so amazing. You know, if you are so stressed with your life, with so burdened with whatever, I don't know what's what's there is in your life today. But I want you to have this message with you. You know, if you have worries, if you have problems, they will not go away. But Jesus said, "I have overcome the world." Jesus said, "Come with me by yourself." And I will bring you to a quiet place. Amen. Now, brethren and friends, experience through rest and peace with Jesus Christ. You know, come to Jesus and leave everything behind and he will lead you to a quiet place. And those of you who have not accepted the Lord, this invitation is for you. Come now to Jesus and be baptized into his name. And you don't have to worry about anything. Good morning and God bless everybody.